733, welcome back. Only a few days left to decide who Toronto's next mayor should be. We continue to feature the seven leading candidates on the show for one-on-one -on -one interviews all week long. And this morning, we hear from former MPP and Cabinet Minister Mitzi Hunter. Good morning, Mitzi. Good morning, Terry. Thank Wonderful to be here. Yeah, thank you for coming in. And, you know, we'll talk right about that. Your background as a former Liberal MPP, former Education Minister as well. And you had just been re-elected in the provincial election last year. Year, what made you want to make the jump to municipal politics and a, a job that isn't guaranteed? I know, and I'm all in, Tammy. I wanted to bring my way of leading, which is to be a champion, to be an outspoken person on behalf of my constituents, as I've done for 10 years in Scarborough. And I want to do that for the rest of the city. I believe that our city is at a really critical moment right now, and we need to change, and we need to do things better in our city. And I believe that I have a plan, and I have a focus on doing just that. I also have a track record and the experience, and, um, and Toronto needs new leadership, and that's what I'm bringing. And, you know, it's, it's an amazing city. I love our city, but everyone agrees that we can do better mm -hmm. and we need that right now. You talk about new leadership and I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to what happened yesterday with the former mayor making an endorsement of another uh, mayoral candidate. And what are your thoughts hearing that? Yeah, well, that's all about those on the inside really trying to hold on, cling to the vestitudes of power and control by their fingernails because Toronto is changing and I feel that when I'm out and I feel that this city needs change and the people want change in our city and those who are on the inside are trying to keep us out and I don't think that's going to work. All right. Uh, I'll talk about Scarborough. This is uh, a place that you love and you talk about, of course, growing up there. Uh, you talk about it very much and has represented Scarborough Guildwood for many years. Uh, I'll start with transit yeah. because there is often uh, the, there is this feeling in Scarborough that Scarborough is left out when it comes to the conversation about the commute and transit. So what are your plans to improve transit for Scarborough, for the entire city, but also be able to get people who are moving in cars where they need to go quicker than they are right now. Yeah, I, I love talking about transit. I'm known as the subway champion because I really stood firm that we need to invest more in building out transit in Scarborough. And that's because, you know, growing up, when I was leaving high school to go to university, my mom and I sat down and looked at my choices, and it was really just one because it was one bus ride up the road, and that was at U of T Scarborough campus. I chose my university because of transit. So I have that focus to make sure that people can get around more easily in our city. I'm gonna start with getting ridership up on the TTC, reversing the service cuts that this present council made and as well as the fare hikes, making it free for seniors. They can ride free on the TTC and wheel trans users. And then starting the system earlier, 5.30 a.m., just like we do here on VT, and making sure that people can get on our transit system instead of in their cars for all those shift workers. And then in the long term, building it out. So expanding the line on Shepherd to, from Downsview to Scarborough, so the North York Scarborough subway extension, building it out on the eastern side, the Eglinton East LRT right through to Malvern. And what about the downtown Waterfront East LRT? There's a brand new community coming up there. Let's make it transit connected and get people out of cars and on to public transit. This gets our ridership up. It will reduce the operating hole that we have on City Council right now as well. And it will make sure that Toronto keeps moving as a world-class global city. We've got to invest in public transit. Okay, and in the investment, it's going to be quite a bit, uh, considering that right now they have reversed or they've put through those cuts that you want to reverse. In order to save money, we had this $1.5 billion budget shortfall as well. How do you plan on tackling it? Because you're one of uh, just a couple of candidates who have released a fully costed platform. Exactly. I've got a fully costed plan to fix the six, and it has my six priorities to get Toronto moving and make sure that we are a vibrant city and we're investing the critical services like filling potholes and those types of everyday things that people rely on, and also building affordable housing. That's the number one issue I hear when I'm out there. But I've told people transparently how I'm going to pay for that. Our, you know, from a property tax perspective, it's 6% 
property tax, but I've also reduced that for people who have low and moderate income, less than 80,000, it'll be 3%. They can get a 50% um, off of their taxes because I recognize that we're in an affordability crisis. And what about seniors, making sure that they don't see an increase in their property taxes if they are low and moderate income seniors. And what that will do, it's actually helping us to address that fiscal hole in the city. We talk already about transit. When you get ridership up, you reduce that operating gap that we see in the TTC. Mm -hmm. And also making sure that we have the resources to invest in the things that are important to the city. In the long term, I will be the city's biggest champion with the federal and the provincial governments. I just came from the province having resigned my seat. I know how to negotiate with the province as well as with the federal government on Toronto's behalf to make sure that we get our fair share and that they're paying for services like refugee settlement, um, any health related costs that are being borne at the city. All right, public safety, we'll move on to that. We have a viewer question. We reached out to viewers uh, to see if they had anything specific they wanted to ask. <laughs> you Eugenio Yay. on Twitter asks will she increase police presence in Toronto personally I believe resolving crime and getting these criminals off the streets is priority number one with priority number two being affordability what do you say to that yeah you know that is a big issue because people have to feel and be safe in our city I've been a long advocate and champion for ending gun violence by making it a public health issue. I've put forward private members' bills at the provincial level to do just that. So I'm going to keep the, t the uh, Toronto Police Services budget stable though, and invest in the things that are there, but I'm not gonna stop at that. You have to invest in the root cause issues like young people, making sure they don't get involved in crime in the first place. I'm expanding public libraries, I'm opening them at uh, on Sundays to make sure access is there. I'm investing in those things that really will solve that issue at its root rather than doing it after the fact when, you know, it's so tragic. In my own community, I've had to attend two schools where teens have been killed on school property in the last year and a bit. I don't want to see that happen in our city. No one's asking for more police to solve that. What they're saying is like, let's not have that happen in the first place. Right, and lastly, we're just running out of time, but I do want to ask you, as someone who's been uh, a liberal at Queen's Park, working against and uh, uh, on the opposite spectrum of the Ford government, how do you plan on working with the government in order to help the city? Yeah, well, I'm certainly going to have a voice on behalf of the people of this city, just like I've done for the people of Scarborough. And I'm used to going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Doug Ford. I sat across the aisle from him for five years. And so I will be Toronto's biggest advocate, and I believe that Premier Ford will understand that as the mayor of Toronto, my job is to stand up for the people of Toronto and get investments in this city and get cooperation. In fact, on my Scarborough North York, uh, my North York Scarborough actually subway extension uh, transit uh, the, the assist, associate transit minister has already said they're going to study that and so we're already seeing that type of traction and I'm very confident that we will get the cooperation that is needed. Toronto is Ontario and Canada's most important city when it comes to the economy of our city and we have to make sure that we invest in things like affordable housing, like public transit, so that this city works for everyone, everywhere, because that city has to be uh, part of Canada's future. We can't afford for Toronto to decline. That's why this moment is so important and people need to get out and vote on June 26, and I'm asking that they vote for change and they vote for me as their mayor. I'm number 55, by the way, on that big ballot. It's a big ballot, all right. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, once again, Mitzi Hunter, for joining us. We really do appreciate Thank it. You. And you can get a look at all of the one-on-one -on -one interviews we've had with the leading candidates by scanning the QR code up on your screen as well.